morning, good morning, YouTube family. Welcome back to the Regina Perkins Show. Uh, this is Regina. Thank you guys for joining me today um, and just taking the time out to click on my videos. I totally appreciate it. Thank you guys for all of, all of the support that you've given me on this channel. Thank you guys. The Laurel Valley Plantation has now reached 200,000 views. You guys are awesome. I do appreciate you and everything that you have done to support the Regina Perkins Show. Uh, today, I wanna take you on a special trip today. I wanna take you somewhere very special that I intended to take you on earlier uh, when before I went to the Laurel Valley Plantation. I wanted to initially take you guys to the Whitney Plantation. I said I wasn't gonna do any more plantation videos, but I decided to go ahead and do this because this is a really special plantation that I'm taking you to. This particular plantation is the only plantation that is dedicated to the plight of slaves. Uh, and so I wanted you, had, you to have an opportunity to visit that with me. Uh, it's a very special place. There's a lot of monuments and everything that is dedicated. They worked really hard to create this place to make it, uh, to, to dedicate something to the memory and the sufferings that they went through. So um, I wanted to have an opportunity to, to experience this. Um, you know, from what I hear, it's a very enlightening experience to go to the Whitney Plantation. Um, so I'm four and a half hours away right now. Uh, in Houston and so that's why it's dark right now I'm just stopping to get gas and then we're gonna head out to uh, head that way but when we get there if I'm not mistaken this plantation is along the river route so the river route pretty much consists of Laurel uh, not Laurel Valley but the Laurel Plantation I believe Oak Alley Plantation uh, and different ones are kind of situated along this route and kind of assimilated in this one area in Louisiana this place is in Wallace Louisiana uh, and they're all just kind of uh, a few minutes apart from one another. So I'm leaving really early so because I hope to have an opportunity to maybe go by another one and just see where all of these plantations are situated. Um, so uh, yeah, there was a lot of slavery in Louisiana, a lot of plantations that were there during the time, uh, antebellum period. So uh, this is where we will be starting our journey today on the river route. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of the support. As I said, the Laura Valley video has now 200,000 views. Woo hoo, woo hoo. Uh, I don't, uh, I also have the Tulum videos. If you guys had an opportunity, watch those. I also had an uh, opportunity to go out of the country. I've yet, uh, if you, maybe the videos will be up when you see this, I don't know, but uh, it's a real special treat. Uh, thank you, we'll enjoy that as well. Um, so I'm here with my husband and my daughters and we're headed out, uh, to go to, uh, Wallace, Louisiana, which is about an hour outside of New Orleans. So maybe I'll get an opportunity to even go there too. So I appreciate you guys. If you look down underneath below, you'll see now that I have a super thanks button. So if you guys want to donate to any of the places that I'm traveling to, because this summer I hope to do a lot more, go to a lot more places, uh, outside of the country. So I hope if you guys want to donate, click that super thanks button. If you're enjoying my content, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe guys. And, uh, it helps my channel out a lot. So I will get back with you guys when it's day and we are um and we, or when we get to the plantation so uh or maybe i'll show you some some shots along the route if we see if i see some interesting things that i catch so thank you guys i will see you guys in a few St. John Parish. St. John Parish is where 
Wallace, Louisiana, and not the river route, but the river road where all of the plantations are located. So we just got into Louisiana um, probably about an hour, probably what, about a couple hours ago. Well, we just reached to the point to where we're almost at the plantation about four minutes away. This Lara plantation, as we can see, the best history tour in the U.S. We're on the River Road. St. Joseph Plantation is here. Felicity, Oak Alley, the Whitney Plantation. Continue on Louisiana 18 East for one and a half miles. I'm assuming this is the River Road where all of the plantations are located and situated along this route. So you could just go for days and hit different plantations. But of course, each plantation will have a different focus. Some are focused on the history. Some are focused on the slaves and some are focused on family some are even talking about the furniture so uh, but we chose Whitney as I said earlier because of its focus on slavery on the slaves um, in their lives so this is I believe Bashery is to the left I believe don't quote me and Edgar is to the right Louisiana to the Regardless, either way, um, yes, plantations on either side. There's the sign, Whitney Plantation. Okay, um, I just um, arrived to the Whitney Plantation. As you can see, I'm standing in the parking lot. Did you guys see that? Right behind me is the uh, is the entrance. It's the actual plantation. So maybe it's a museum. I don't know. Uh, it's a pretty hot day here in Louisiana. Um, as I told you guys, it was going to take four and a half hours. We've probably been driving about, what, five hours? Five and a half? What we? Five hours. And so we are here. And so this is a portion of what you see behind me here. Um, it's kind of surrounded by a little swamp area. So it's kind of, as I said, when we came down the river road, it's kind of, you gotta kind of drive up in here to go into it. So we are here. Uh, there's my husband. There's Tamar. Tamar, the YouTuber. She said that she looked cute. She's fashioning for you guys at yes. the plantation. Oh my God. There's Ashley, the other YouTuber. No, the real obsessor. She's a real obsessor. <laughs> the real obsessor. What? Yeah. These girls are vloggers. And go follow their channel. Go follow them on YouTube. I'll look Tamar for beauty, fashion, travel. Did you tell them how you dragged everybody here? Did I tell them how you dragged everybody here? You can tell them right, the camera's on you. So I'm she woke us up at 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't believe this. And told us, she walked in my room, it was pitch black. She was like, are you going? You gonna get dressed? Text yeah. me also said, I'm getting dressed. I did, Are you coming? And there was no response. So and I had to come Ashley, get you. And Ashley loafed around. Yeah. But I believe once they get here, and then they'll see everything, then possibly they'll. I mean, I know it's going to be great. I'm fine with seeing this. It just was a hard get up. I'm fine with seeing this. I want to see New Orleans too again. Okay, so right here is the. Right here is, you can see out here, there's like when I came through this road here. 
you can see the sugar bowls that are lined up here. Because remember in Louisiana there was sugar cane plantations, indigo, and so you can see right here the trees, the under those trees right there, those palm trees. You can see the sugar bowls right there. There's the swamps here, and there's a little bridge. So I'm not sure if that was here during the time of the plantation, but we will soon find out. And so we're about to go into the entrance here. Look at that huge anchor. Wow. What does it mean? Definitely, Jesus is the anchor for my soul. So, yeah. I hope uh, they allow me to film. Welcome to the Whitney Plantation. Tours begin at 10 a.m. daily with last entry at 3. It opened its doors December 2014 with a mission to educate the public about the history and legacies of slavery in the United States and reverence of the many stolen lives that endured and were lost on this site. We request that visitors conduct themselves in a way befitting their memory. Please be mindful of the energy you bring into this space. All right. I get you together. It's a restroom here. We have to go to the restroom. Just for future purposes. I have one in my purse. I know, but you got that hot one. I'm trying to give you one that's good. You have it on, right? No, I'm just getting one in case, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to bring it. Ma'am, you can take pictures of this one. I can like you take it to me. This is the Antioch Baptist Church. Antioch Baptist Church. I want to my dinner. This is, I don't know if this church was here on the I site or not. Uh, we don't know if it was here on site or okay, if it was possibly. It's so cool that they have these headphones that you can listen to the history on. You see all the different pathways. Look at that old tree. Okay, this is back here where the monuments are. This is the Wall of Honor. This memorial is dedicated to over 350 people who were enslaved on this plantation. So it's names of all of the slaves here. Wow, amazing. This is the Wall of Honor. All of the slaves that were here were put on this wall. That's, that's amazing. Look at the names. They were, they were not offering the guides at this time, so we're only doing the audio tour, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can listen with the devices and hear about the history. of the slaves that's why I said this particular plantation was focused on the slaves and their families so many plantations you go to they do not 
they acknowledge the families of, of the, the owners of the plantation, but they never really mention the slaves. So this is one of the first, the first, if not, I think it's the first plantation that has made an effort to do this. Look at the different commentaries that I think these descendants of the slaves were able to put their commentaries up there about their life on the life on the planet. Some of the slaves, um, even on the way through the passage, they said they committed suicide. And so when they got here, they were stripped of their names and their names was taken away. And it's almost as to take the character away of who you are and who you were born to be, to take your name away. I would have uh, would have wanted the tour, but to learn a little bit more. But the guided tour is pretty sneaky footage from me. This fourteen. Look at that. This is a whole map. There's a bridge that uh, crosses across the swamp here. I'm sure this was part, most, most of the plantation I've been to, they always got the swamp. It's probably to keep them uh, concealed in, in the places to work. So the tour is telling us to go down this pathway. And so that's where we go on so we can hear the next entry and find out what it's about as we go down this winding path. But as I said earlier, the wall of honor, um, they talked about how when the slaves came to the middle passage that that's when they came over the ships that some of them committed suicide and the first thing they did was strip their names from them and they gave them names so as I was saying earlier that you once somebody takes your name away it takes away your identity it takes away who you are and it was to break their spirit um, so yeah look at that how heartbreaking and heart-wrenching for someone to remove you from what you knew involuntarily and to bring you to a strange foreign place where you do not speak the language and do not even understand why you were even brought here. You were just brought captive. That is, reminds them of the scripture in the Bible that says, how can we sing a song when we in a strange land? But these slaves managed to be resilient. They managed to yet get out in the fields and sing the old work, work slave songs. And I'll insert some of those in here to get through the day. And not only that, it was a secret code to talk to each other. So we'll talk more about that. As you can see back there, I believe these are the cabins. I haven't gotten to the part of the entry, so I don't want to, don't quote me on it. But this is amazing. This is the re returning the change. This is amazing piece of sculpture right here. A symbol of freedom. It didn't say in chains, it said returning the chains. So that is absolutely a symbol of freedom. I'm totally mesmerized by this. Look at that. So we're no longer in chains. No more bondage physically and definitely no more bondage mentally or spiritually. 
we are free as a people. And don't let anybody else put you in chains again. Not in your mind, not in your soul, not in your spirit. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want to go explore the world. This is why I'm doing this world tour so I can come to a more awareness in my own spirit about who I am and develop me in a more, I can't explain it, but it's self-discovery for me as well. And so this is amazing. Black history, we are strong people. African-Americans are strong people and we come from a strong heritage. So let's go down and see. This is the middle of the courtyard here. I'm not sure what this is, but look at this oak tree. We saw oak tree the other day just like this. This oak tree is so old, the limbs have spread it all the way out to the going out in the middle. This is the big house. So we're getting ready to go in there in just a minute. Look at that old lighthouse. The big house was the plantation owner's home. Slave labor was built this crazy Creole cottage in 1790 from Cypress and Brick using a method called Briquette Entre Potu, I'm probably not saying that right. The Haydale family lived there for 75 years. So the enslaved domestics lived in slave quarters that once stood behind the big house. So, yeah. You said we could take pictures. Okay, this is the big house. Place. This is the lower floor of the big house. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what went on in this place? This was the indoor refrigeration, as they said, um, Louisiana, because it's built under sea level that any of it, you can always dig down and he said it will be like 30 and 40 degrees down there but this is was where you could store things it was very cold in there oh. so now we're headed to the store and so the store was a way to keep the anything that the slaves may have needed and they were they were able to go into that store and get things but the store kept them in debt for years and years because they would buy something and they would never it would never seem to get it paid off so the debt would just pass from generation to generation and this is another way of how they kept the slaves in bondage operated until 1975. The plantation store was built after slavery. It sold food, clothing, medicine, cigarettes, and cold lunches. Plantation workers bought items from the store on credit, and the cost of their purchase was withheld from their pay. This store closed in the 1960s. And there's a picture of the store. And that's the big house back there in the back. Why does the story of this debt sound so familiar to us? Keep you in bondage in your money, your finances, keep you in bondage physically. Physical work that you never get it paid. You gotta hit play, it's gonna describe it. This brick was built by the slaves.
Yeah, this is the cool room where the people where the food was stored. This is the refrigerating refrigeration. The cool room. This is the dining area. And this is where the enslave the in-house slaves. This is the dining room area. All this is dining room. Yeah, so yeah, the, most people think that the in-house slaves had it good, but they were around the slave owners all of the time. So they were raped, had to constantly keep themselves out of trouble, I guess, because they were a constant reach of their owners. So now we're getting ready to walk along the path. I, we just walked out of the big house and in the back. We're headed to the kitchen area where the slaves are. So this is it. Path four. This is the kitchen. This is where the laundry will be done back here. You can see that a water pump right there. So this is the kitchen from 1830 to 1850. Enslaved Damascus, Julian, Marie, Lucy, Francois, and Sally worked here in 1860. Julian and Marie cooked food for the plantation owner. Marie, Hadel, Lucy, and Francois did the laundry. Sally worked inside the big house. These women lived in cabins in this, year, in this yard along with their 13 children. Oh, wow. Just started That's the back of the big house. Okay, so this is the kitchen. I'm about to take you into the kitchen. They said I would often um, cook pigeon. Um, and they said there were pigeon holes in here. You can still see the pigeon holes. I believe maybe that's right here. I see some little holes in the wall. I'm not sure. But this is the cover. They would also do laundry in here, right? And so water was boiled for the laundry. So it was a pretty big kitchen here. And this is where all the food was prepared. As you can see, this was an organized system of labor. Everybody had their place and everybody had where they were going to go and where they were going to be. When you think about it, it's something to think that this is the original. This is crazy. Are you on number five? I was fixing to hit it until I saw y'all going this way. Okay, that's the owner's house? Because that's the big house. The slave owner's house. The slave owner's house right there. A slave owner. Okay, we're as I looked over there, there's the overseer's house. Um, the overseer was the one who kind of was manager of the slaves, and underneath him was the um, what did they call the other guy that was underneath the overseer? Underneath the overseer. He was a slave driver, yeah. and so he was an enslaved person himself, but he often helped to initiate punishments as well, administer punishments, not initiate. Um, but they talked about how the punishment that the slaves went through was so harsh, and they would do it out in the open and vis visibility wherever all the other slaves could see it. That way they could stay in line and not misbehave. So it was a way of humiliation to keep everybody else in check. So as you can see, it was... Um, it was just a harsh way of life with no freedoms whatsoever. Well, of course, you're not freedom for the slaves, but it was just a harsh way of life of labor and beatings and punishment. As you can see, this is the audio. This is the name tag that they give you. Not name tag, but yeah. Pauline Jordan. And it gives a brief history about Pauline. And right now she should be about 93 years old. 
amazing so this is the blacksmith shop right here turn the this is the blacksmith shop right here most of the time if the slaves were ever to see freedom it's because they had a marketable skill and that would help them to be to buy their freedom so this is the blacksmith shop also if you look at this blacksmith shop this building was built in 2002 on the site this is once where the blacksmith shop once stood but they were skill workers and so um yeah some original pieces made by the same blacksmiths are still in use in the big house so yeah it's still here look at that and in this particular blacksmith shop, if you ever watched the movie Django Unchained, this is where, the scene where they did the blacksmith. Um, the blacksmith scene was was filmed here. This is the jail. Shell was manufactured after the Civil War used in Gonzales, Louisiana. This is the jail, and oftentimes it was not used on the plantation. The jail was used when they transported slaves from place to place. So when they get ready to go do the slave trade, they would take these, these would be out in the courtyard. Where, whatever city they was in to the slave then the slave trade would happen like once a year like in October or something like that but they would take them ahead of time and they would pin them up in the courtyards wherever they was and so this is where they would stay and they talked about how it was so hot in here because it was metal um, so you can imagine so this is where they stayed to the auctions pretty sure that there were slaves that even died when they were in this, when they were waiting to be sold because of the heat. Just torture. Let's see, let's go in here. Cell. Look how small this cell is. And it's completely metal. This is metal, y'all. You know how hot this metal probably gets in the summertime? It's, it's almost like being put inside of an oven. Wow. There's a cross there no comfort whatsoever a concrete floor and just hot metal walls i'm sure the walls were probably so hot they couldn't even lean against the walls this is and i'm sure many slaves probably died before they were even sold because it was so hot look at this this is stifling heat so as i said these were not on the plantation itself but they were used to house the slaves when they went in for the slave trade and for the auctions step back so you can see what this looks like <sighs> the things slaves endured So this is the slave cabins here. As you can see right here, as we get ready to walk into the slave cabins, every morning the slaves would get up and they would come around to these houses to wake them up. And they would work from cannot see to cannot see from sun up to sundown. So this is uh, one of the cabins here. It was hot in the summer and cold in the winter. So no comfort whatsoever. There's the beds and the straw. Pretty much just a place to lay down. These children are throughout this whole statues of these children. It's so haunting because these are the ones that will leave the stories to tell when they're older of what they saw and what they witnessed. The this parents. was the generation that told the stories about what it was like to be. Children were often worked from the age of 10. They were enslaved. So as you can see, there's the straw or the bed, no mattress. 
this is it. And you can see those holes through that, those walls. As I said, hot in the summertime, cold in the winter. I'm not sure how many families are probably sleeping here, but definitely it was a lot. It was a lot of slaves in one of the night. We just we had this one house all to yourself. There's those little children. Couple once tell the story. I'm not sure why this blue paint here, these engravings here. Gonna find out. The slave quarters. Once did a half mile from here. A road through the center of the cabins led to the sugar mill and slave families lived together in these cabins and they were separated by death, escape, or the slave trader. Outside, they often grew small garden plots and raised livestock. So that's where you see the garden right there. So we go down this pathway. These are the slave quarters. There's some more. You can see the sugar bowls lined up here on either side. There's another slave cabin. These are original cabins. Look at those sugar bowls. Cabin. Yeah, earlier I told you guys about the blue paint. These people lived in these slave. Um, cabins to the 1970s and 1960s and so when we saw the blue paint that that is the last remnants of the residents that stayed there so people continue to stay in these slave cabins um, the sugar kettles here that you see they were used in the sugar mill to boil cane juice and make the sugar and in my previous videos you saw me talk about the sugar cane and the sugar bowls I've talked about that previous in the production of that um, so in 1860 um, that fit, uh, Grand Lewis was the grant was the head sugar maker on this plantation, uh, and these men were sold from the upper south in the domestic slave trade. So there's, those are those big bowls that we've talked about so much. If you haven't seen my other videos, go watch those videos, and I talk about the sugar uh, production in uh, my other two videos on my channel. So, so between October and December. Um, the sugar factory was a 24-hour operation, so look at there. They even work by candlelight. They're all over this plantation, these sugar bowls. Earlier, we talked about the sugarcane production, which is one of the most dangerous places being out in the sugar fields because of the wild animals. And they were out in the wilderness, and snakes. And, and so it was very dangerous for, for work for the slaves to do, not only just hard work and back breaking, but it was very dangerous because they were exposed to the elements um, while out in the sugarcane fields. You can see that over there where the cabins are being held up because of the hurricane. Hurricane Ida came through here and destroyed a lot of the um, buildings. There was four cabins that were previously here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, some of the plantations got a serious hit from this, the hurricane. So 
So a lot of these structures uh, here, especially in Louisiana with the climate and the weather on the Gulf Coast, uh, we all know that in Houston too as well, have suffered a lot of damage that cannot be repaired. So a lot of our history have been lost. People take the opportunity to come out and see these structures because we just never know um, what could happen. So there's another cabin. I'm not sure what those the little train system is, but I'm pretty sure it was used for work. But I see lumber here and they probably use it for possibly the sugar cane. I'm about to look into that. There's another cabin here. There's these old swamps here. There's a lot of artwork that we see here on the plantation. You saw the, the children, those sculptures. Um, I'm gonna listen more about it on the audio tour so I can talk to you guys about it. But as we walk to, we're walking now to uh, the Field of Angels. Yes. I'm about to get the down in a minute here. Uh, so we're headed to the Field of Angels and we'll get to see the sculpture that was created by some of the artists uh, that have made, as we saw, remember we saw the other sculpture uh, that says Returning the Chains. Well, there are the artists, there's some other things that they have created here. Um, as you'll see when we get around here, these are some of the most beautiful things you've ever saw. Those sculptures are some of our freedom. This is a memorial here. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. These are the slaves that was in the uprising and they were decapitated and put along up and down the river. And that's how the uprising ended. Barbaric. Oh my god, it's just oh my god, I can't believe some of the things my ears are learning here. So, this is the German Coast Uprising, and this is where 500 people who have been enslaved in the lower Mississippi decided to revolt, and their whole uh, purpose was to go uh, to revolt, take New Orleans, free all the slaves. And um, they started out with 500, but um, they started on the plantation of Colonel Andre where his sons and were killed. And so a lot of the whites fled to New Orleans um, with their families. But they burned plantation houses. They um, added even more recruits from some of the enslaved people who were escaped earlier, who were called Maroons. And so, the, but um, yeah, they wanted to capture New Orleans and free all the enslaved people there and find their way to a free country. But um, death was only at the end of their journey. I mean, they were captured. That is the memorial that you see of all the decapitated heads. Men, women, and children had their heads cut off and, and placed alongside for everybody to see. And they were killed in broad daylight. Here's all their names. That's Charles right. Delon was the leader. You, you listened to it already? You know one where they um, had the birds eat his body. And the birds ate his body. Oh, wow. They had executed him in the public, and they hung him up so they could, everybody could see him. You see the information on there, their historic resistance ended with a bloodbath. It's the Negro Insurrection. This is the trial they had to go through, which was no point in having. And so Charles Devon had been the leader. 
uh, who was enslaved by Evergreen Plantation, and enslaved by the widow Trampinier, and were executed. Every all the defendants except number three were found guilty, and condemned to death. There was no right to appeal. So, wow. All the insurgents who were sentenced were either shot or hanged on the levee in the Fort of St. Ferdinand of Congo Square. Some were beheaded, and their remains were left to be viewed by crowds of onlookers uh, upriver. The convicted insurgents were shot in front of the plantation where they had been slaves. They were beheaded, and their heads were posted on the poles along the river road in front of their plantation. I said that earlier. Men, women, and children were forced to watch this procedure. Most of them revolutionaries raised between 20 and 30 years. Wow. Okay, are you want me to play just with the gel? Yeah, you can just, okay, my daughter's gonna put a flower here um, just to add to Charles Delon, the leader of these insurgents. We are free now. No longer in chains. William Nash created the sculptures that we just saw. But here are these sculptures. These here. Look at these upraised hands. This represent emancipation. This large ditch depicts the metal passage. And there's a lady over there in the field of angels, created by Rod Mohead there when she's holding the baby, which we'll get to that part. Look at this. This is amazing. It's beautiful. symbolizing emancipation. This is thanks tears to your eyes. The middle passage, which is once this symbolizes the middle passage, this disc. This is where the slaves were brought from Africa to America. And you can see them in this cyclone of terror and horror. Look at that. The hands reaching out, the chains, the anguish the tears and probably the confusion like what is happening to us that their world is being turned upside down oh. memory of Reginald L. Penniston father, healer, teacher and dear friend this one is dedicated to the enslaved children that died in St. John's Parish and there's the field of angels it honors 2,200 enslaved children who died here between 1823 to 1863, and they compiled these names from baptism, disease, harsh labor. It also it created high death rates, so these enslaved mothers suffered tremendously. Francois, an enslaved laundress on this plantation, lost five children by the age of 23. Three died within one a month. Children that were born here. The women were often allowed to go out only twice a day and breastfeed these children. So we do know that that was not enough <laughs> to sustain these children. So they suffered the harvest as well. This is the field of angels. Look at her. And she's holding the babies in memory of the dead babies who died here. You can see their stories of the children. Look at that. The only music instruments we have was a banjo. So I made their banjos. Look at all these children that died here. 2,200 enslaved children. Five months, two and a half years, 12 years, seven years. 
nine months, 22 months, 16 months, six years, two years, three years, born yesterday, one year and seven months. Um, this is mash will call us and stick his finger in biscuits and pour molasses in the hole. That was sure good eating. Little slave, these even had didn't have no didn't have a name at all. Master Hicks had a bell to ring for all the children to be put to bed at sundown and they slept late. He said, let them grow. Now child. We had lots of barrels of Louisiana molasses. We could eat all we wanted. Being, being groomed and raised to be slaves. They pass around peanuts and whoever got three nuts in one shot to give that one to the one who had started the game. This is games that they would make up and play. I wasn't doing nothing but toting water. I toted water for a whole year when I was a boy about eight years old. I was the water boy for the field hands. When we'd be playing, they would take all the toys from me. Miss Fanny would say, poor Nancy ain't got no toys. Here says one day old man dad called Antoine. He was so old that they kept him in the camp to keep the children, to amuse the children. No longer useful for work. He's saying, shoot chicken. Sure, you feed my chicken. Yes, ma'am. You brown my biscuit. Yes, ma'am. Ring around the rosy. Lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep it. If I should have before with I pray the Lord my soul to take. And this I ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now this bell here, we we'll ring this bell in honor and symbolize for the lives that was lost here in slavery. Now this memorial here, I believe consists of all of the slaves that were here on this plantation. So this is the Alice Gwendam and Mildred Hall, Alice, Alice Gwendam and Mildred Hall. She's the historian that did this memorial record. It was 107,000 people that was slaved in Louisiana between 1719 the year the first slave ships arrived in Colony in 1820. This was named in honor of Alice Gwendolyn Hall. So these memorial records are here. So all the enslaved people in Louisiana, which is only a portion, is here. Named after her, Alice Mendel Hall. It's like a virtual cemetery. This is what we have to remember them. It's not all of them, but it's Pretty much this is only a gravestone of memory that we have of those who suffered and those who gave their life. And thank God for Dr. Hall who took the time to do these records.
this stuff. See on this wall, wall they, they all do. given the accounts of what happened. Once a woman was thrown in a big bed of entrance, they had caused the sum to assemble. She was tied down with heavy weights, so she couldn't move. She was tortured awfully. Girls were raped. So, like, if they wasn't saying yet, they had to wear a big shirt. No pants. Nothing. That name? My daughter's name. Hey, Mom. I don't know. This is nothing. We weren't even animals. We was less than animals. People don't do animals like that. Menlo Hall goes on for days and reading the stories are so heart-wrenching of the accounts of the children. They're telling their accounts of what they saw. And so there are little personal narratives that are so heart-wrenching and heartbreaking to read that it's, a, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. To see this is, with your own eyes, this is amazing. You guys have to come to the Whitney Plantation so you can see because we've been totally immersed in what the slaves experienced. Um, everything is all about them. And so my heart is breaking from just what I've read. And many say, you know, why do you come here? You know, and they say, you know, you're just stirring up trouble. I'm not stirring up trouble because I'm visiting a plantation because I want to know. And you know, you leave with a better out outcome of life, a better outlook, a better understanding of who you are and where you came from. A lot of whys can be answered about your ancestry, your people, when you come to a place like this. You know, people of all color are here and all races are here so we can learn. And when we leave this place, we have a better disposition of understanding one another and why we're here and how we can come together as one people. Still in Low Hall. It's just that much. That name memorial's here. It's amazing that they took the time to do this. To honor those who lost their lives here on these plantations. My goodness. So this is the end of the pathway. We're gonna end over here at the Antioch Baptist Church, which was really Antioch Baptist Church. That was the original name. And now I guess they've changed to Antioch, but it really meant Antioch Baptist Church against the yoke. So that lets you know. So we end at the Antioch Baptist Church. And they changed it to Antioch, so against the yoke of this church. And in the words of Dr. Abraham's sake, if you leave this place angry, then he failed at his mission. But the mission is for us to learn from our history. No matter how painful it is, history can't be painful, but we learn from it. And we learn from our mistakes. And we are better people because of it. So they didn't get to worship the Lord like they wanted to, but this was their opportunity to finally get to worship God in the manner that they saw fit. This is their story. These are their blood and their teeth. Thank you. Here's my name tag, y'all. This is Pauline Johnson. This is the tag I wore when I got here. This is what they gave to me. Her There's her history right back there. I was 12 year old when freedom come. Us daddy, he worked the ground he owned on Sunday and sold the things to buy us shoes to put on us feet and clothes. The white folks didn't give us clothes, but they let him have all the money he made in his own plot to get them. One day us papa falls sick in the bed just for freedom. 
and he kept calling for the priest. Oh, Master called the priest, and just for us, Papa died, the priest married him and my mama. For that, they just married by the Master's word. Pauline Johnson, age about 93. to get some of these books and read them in my leisure. These are the slave narratives for the different states. the history indigo talks about the german coast uprising it's so chock full of information here at this place the middle passage just talks about the civil codes of louisiana the religion every topic white gold get this it talks about the africans of louisiana the model of a French slave trading ship. This is what those ships look like. which is John Norman's plans of New Orleans and, and Maryland's hospital, hospital, hospital which is on the whole map. Third municipality, the second. It's the domestic slave trade. The legend, all of these are hanging from the ceilings and the entrance when you walk into it. So it's a museum of sorts. And the free people of color. Right. Those are the civil codes of Louisiana. Kept the slaves in bondage. And there's another one of those statues of the children. It's so haunting to see. These men, women, and children were the victims of a disgraceful trade the people in which people were baptized but did not let their fate took part in change. The children spoke beyond the grave. Fabric scraps and notions. These notions and fabrics were set, sold in the Whitney Plantation during the 1950 1960. This is what it was like after slavery. Continued to be a working plantation, even though slavery was not legal and field workers were now paid wages, the power structure still remained almost unchanged. Plantation business became big business. You could spend hours at this place just devouring this information and immersing yourself in the plight of the slaves. Look at the plantation portraits, photos from the Southern Mutual Health Association collection.
people my people their blood still speaks from the ground This concludes our tour of the Whitney Plantation. I hope you guys enjoyed the content um, and what I shared with you all. Um, it was, um, I'm speechless to say the least of what I experienced at this place. Uh, it has been well done. Uh, you can come out with a different perspective of life, a uh, different perspective of what life is really all about. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys uh, continue to support my channel as I travel to many different places. I love to share what I experience with you all as I go on this world tour. As I said, there will be other videos. I did have an opportunity to go out of the country, so you'll get an opportunity to see those videos as well. And so this is um, just another one of the installments. I hope that when I leave here that I want to go down the river road, which is where I'm at to kind of get a view of the other plantations um if I, i'll insert it before or after this footage but nevertheless this is the end of the whitney plantation tour thank you guys for supporting my channel thank you guys for all the support that you've given me on the other videos you guys are awesome you're great if you want to support me and my efforts and what i'm doing as far as traveling the world traveling the country you can always give me a super thanks and donate go follow me on all my platforms regina perkins on facebook on instagram follow the regina perkins show also on facebook on the regina perkins show podcast go follow that and you can listen to my archives and also regina perkins ministry is also on facebook as well i mean on youtube as well so you guys will find me on many different platforms but thank you guys for your support thank you if you have not subscribed to my channel go like and subscribe to my channel Give me a thumbs up for the video um, and just take the opportunity to go through some of the other videos and catch some of the other um, sites and places that I've been to. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do appreciate you uh, for supporting the Regina Perkins show. And so that is, uh, yeah, the end of this video. So thank you guys. Wow. Peace.